We're in uh, the 802 Apprenticeship uh, Training Center right now. Is one of those uh, one of our affiliates. Uh, IUPA TDC7 represents approximately 2,000 workers in um, painting, drywall finishing, glazing, uh, paint makers, sh trade show, show floor workers, um, and some other industries as well. We have approximately 100 uh, different signatory contractors that we uh, we also we work with. Uh, there are partners uh, in our in our industries that we work with, um, and one of our roles is to help uh, our um, our contractors that we supply them with uh, skilled uh, labor. Um, one of the reasons why we picked this building was because it had um, it had enough capacity to expand our training needs as we you know as we grew so we still have a lot of room in this building to you know accommodate more classes more apprentices um, we're, we're under capacity right now as far as the number of apprentices that we could train in this facility um, we're always you know like Jeff said we're always looking for partners to partner with um, to train their workers you know so not just the the contractors that we have currently that are signed uh, to our collective bargaining agreement but new partners you know there's a lot of issues in our industry that uh, we're committed to fixing you know there's a lot of misclassification in the paint and drywall industry um, employers misclassify employees call them independent contractors this happens all the time we're committed to combating that practice and you know making the industry Fair. Fair. Um, well, our apprenticeship right now, I think in the Madison area, I think we have probably about 35, 40 apprentices uh, in our various trades right now. It's, it's a little bit less than what we'd like to see. Uh, I think, it, you know, coming out of the pandemic and COVID, um, you know, it's, it's a little bit behind from where what we'd like to be. Um, but there's always opportunities for apprentices uh, in our trades. So we're always looking. We want to, you know, we want to, we want to grow our, grow our organization. Uh, well, today I got uh, second, third year apprentices. Uh, this is actually our training center in Fitchburg, local 802. Uh, so what we are doing today is wood graining. Uh, so what we do here is we teach them everything in the painting trade that we do, whether it's uh, finishing drywall, uh, brush and roll walls, uh, spray, uh, full finish, uh, this would be considered full finish, this wood graining that we do. Uh, everything that has to do with a paint and trade is what we teach them here. These apprentices right here are second year and third year apprentices, and they go every other week. So the week that they're not here, I have first year apprentices, and it's them by themselves. So when I have them, there's probably 75, 80% of the time we are in the classroom because they get all of their safety training, uh, history of paint. I get a lot of history, uh, you know, built up to before we start really doing the hands-on stuff. So, uh, but with these guys, it probably flip-flops. We're probably, it's probably 30 in the classroom, 70% out here. So when you're second and thirds, you actually have a lot more hands-on time. You know, they've done all their safety training already, that kind of thing. So, uh, they're, they're more, uh, more seasoned, you know, as a painter you know, from being in the field and everything too. So it's easier to just get them more stuff out here. I do teach them about special coatings, epoxies, uh, macro epoxies, you know, all that, uh, plural components. Um, we do sandblasting. Uh, so we do all that also. So they're getting both ends, commercial and the industrial part of our trade. So, cause there are some contractors that do sandblasting, you know, they'll, they'll do tankers or, uh, they'll work in a mill or, or something like that, especially up in the UP and Upper Michigan. It's a lot of, you know, uh, working in the uh, paper mills up there, working in the mines uh, in Marinette Marine, right on the border of Michigan and Wisconsin. Uh, they paint the ships that are there. Uh, our members do the Mackinac Bridge up there, and they also do the bridge uh, to Canada. They do half of it, and then can Canadians do the other half. We call these mock-ups. So that's where we do all our training, our hands-on training. 
We also have a classroom where I would give PowerPoints or, or do video presentations on you know, things in our trade on, on how to do certain things. Uh, but then when we get to the hands-on, that's when we use these mock-ups right here. So it would be raw drywall. We'd teach them how to tape, tape and finish it. I right, finish the drywall, we'd prime it, we'd paint it. Uh, part of it we'll use for wall coverings. That's another big thing that we do is teach wall coverings, uh, vinyl wall covering, paper, fabrics, you know, all kinds of wall covering. So we teach them that. Uh, they're getting uh, all the basics is what they are getting in school. They go once a week, they get all the basics of everything that we do. Uh, so then the other time they're working for their contractor out in the field and that's when they get all the job, you know, hands on on the job training. So it's like a, you know, 1090 split. They're getting 10 percent kind of from me, all the basics. And then the journeymen out in the field actually are showing them on the job on how to do stuff, too. And that's where they're getting most of their experience out there. We are doing wood graining right now. Uh, so I would do a little bit of classroom stuff with them and, and go over types of woods, uh, things like that, uh, how you would finish wood. Uh, but like these, pretty much are metal doors, all right? You put a wood graining base on it, and then you have wood graining tools that we use to make it look like wood. Uh, for instance, this one right here, this second door right here. Uh, and like I said, this is the first time they've, they're doing this, you know, but we'll do this for a little bit. But that's a steel door, actually. <laughs> so kind of kind of training them how to how to wood grain is mainly what it is. So uh, we can do flat doors. You can do panel doors. You can do whatever color you want to do. Also, I give them the option, you know, I mean, because it's just training. So we do it that. But, you know, there's times on the job where you got to do it. Uh, it's kind of a lost art. Also, some of this full finished stuff, there are still uh, members that know how to do all this. Uh, fortunately, I'm one of them too, but it is kind of a lost art where you don't get too much of this in the commercial end anymore, uh, or not even in the industrial end at all, neither. You know, it'll be less sometimes in the residential area. Uh, it's just, it's, it's rare now that you'll get our contractors doing this, but it's always nice to know. And like I tell these apprentices, all my apprentices is, uh, you wanna learn everything in our trade. You just learn everything. And why you guys, why do you, why I tell you you learn everything? You're always going to stay busy. Okay. Yes, that makes you an asset. Yes, makes you an asset to your contractor when you can do everything. So uh, here are actually some of the tools that we do for finishing drywall. You got stilts to make you taller. Uh, let's see, this is a bazooka. You would run tape right here. This puts all that tape that you see right now, puts this on just by running this thing there. All right, it puts the mud and the tape on. This is our sandblasting setup. It's coiled up now because I won't get to it till next semester. Uh, but we plug it all in, it's all done by air. You put your media in here. And we do blast outside because we don't have a booth yet. We're in the process of getting sandblast booth. But because we do do it outside, we use this uh, slag right here. So it's coal slag, which is biodegradable. Uh, we did have uh, shells, walnut shells, because obviously that's biodegradable, because uh, we needed something biodegradable because we're doing it outside. Uh, but it just wasn't strong enough to cut through some of the stuff we were doing. So that's why we went with the slag. Uh, it cuts a lot better. Like I said, we'll get into that next semester, because uh, that's the industrial end that we do. So. This right here, if you can actually shoot up, you see a tripod up there. This is our confined space training. Uh, we train them on confined space also. Uh, so we actually hook them up to that, lower them down, you know, do the whole confined space training there. Uh, like I said, because we have some contractors that, that will go into a tank or something like that, and it's a confined space. So you have to be trained, you know, we train our members in that too. So they get a lot of safety training. This is one of our aerial lifts uh, right here that uh, we do uh, mute training on. Uh, so MUP is actually Mobile Elevated Work Platform, uh, is what a MUP is. Uh, so we train them on the scissor lift. We have a boom lift that's outside, uh, so they would get trained on that also. Uh, so that when they are on the job, their, their contractor knows that, you know, if they got that card certificate that they can operate it, 
they know they can put their apprentice on that lift then, so. When we moved in, uh, when we bought this building, we moved in, um, I think we're really happy with the relationship that we have with Fitchburg itself. Uh, we've had we've had community events here, um, and I think that it, we we've liked it. We, I think we're good partners, and you know it's a, it's a, a, like a good neighbor. We have um, actually a neighborhood association; they have their uh, meetings here. Um, so I think it's just important that you know we're here. Uh, we're not uh, you know the unions aren't you know we get a bad rap sometimes. We're boogeymen or whatever. But we're not, we're just normal people and we're a part of the community and I think it's, you know, uh, we're a resource. Yeah, and we work for working people. You know, we, we want to make sure that working people are treated fairly on the job sites and um, that they have some something to look forward to. Sure. Uh, I think the first step is probably going to our website, uh, filling out a, um, just a, a brief information sheet, uh, ask, you know, and it will go to one of, the, one of our staff members and we'll follow up with them and talk, you know, kind of see what they're what they're interested in. And then we'll kind of refer them to, you know, whatever if they're in a different area, what area would be right, or whatever trade specifically. So I, that's the easiest way: is just go to the website, fill out the the, the information form, um, and then you can always, you know, our offices are always open. You always stop in and obviously talk to one of the guys as well. So it's pretty easy. Um, it's it's there's not a lot. Uh, to go into wanting to join one of our trades, I mean, it's we we want we want make, we want people to come in, so it there's not a lot of, a lot of roadblocks. We uh, you know we sit down, we have conversation, and we, we try to figure out what we can do to help them. 